Hey everybody, it's Casual Boobs coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be covering the Tier 9 Kunze Panzer, uh, one of the Tier 9 German tanks that you can uh, you can get from the Battle Pass, uh, and it's not new anymore. I made another video about it uh, when it was new, and it should be, you can go click on that right now, um, but I, after a while we've had a chance to play around with the thing, and I, I still really like it. I liked it before, and I like it even more now, but I know a lot more about it, and so hopefully I can give you guys a little better opinion, a little better idea of how to play it, and how to wrangle the thing, and make the best out of it, so let's get into the stats. Okay. Okay. So if we're looking at the stats for the Kunzi Panzer, I know the big thing about this is that it gets two firing modes. It gets a siege mode. And when you click into the siege mode, you can't move for two seconds and, uh, and so on. And it gets, it, some things change and I'll go over that. But really, I think people get too stressed out about this. They, you start to like, there's a thing with magic, uh, magic, the card game where like, if somebody has a card with, it does X and then they add more to it. Um, people start to look at it and overthink it and say, well, but, but like that extra stuff isn't that great. And they downgrade the card. But if you think about it, like, what does it do at its base level and use that as an, as a measure for what it can do? Uh, it's pretty, it, it helps, I guess, identify like the true power level of the card. And in this case, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if we just ignore the fact that the siege mode exists, let's just for a second, just pretend that it doesn't exist. And we just look at the tank, how it is right now. It's still pretty freaking solid. And I'm going to explain exactly why, like, 400 meters of base view range is fantastic. You got 10 degrees of gun depression. Um, 10, let me see, 10 exactly over the front and you get slightly less over the sides. I think this is a little bit con maybe confused. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, you get you get 10 degrees over the front and it's subs a little bit less over the sides and stuff, but um, the soft stats on the turret traverse are very good. Uh, the 390 alpha is great. The DPM is great. The penetration is great. The, and the standard round is uh, is APCR, which is really nice. So the the uh, shell velocity is fantastic, fourteen hundred base or whatever, fifteen hundred base. You get a, a heat round that's uh, three hundred millimeters of pen with still decent penetration. Like all of this is really really good. Um, like I, I'm trying to think. Like the downside, like the dispersion is not that great. Point four is not that great. Uh, the top speed is really good. Sixty five feels good. Uh, the 23, I'm sorry, 21 power to weight is good. The ground resistance resistances are solid, so it's pretty speedy. Um, there's no armor whatsoever. None, none, zero. Like, you, you might occasionally troll somebody with an occasional, like, auto bounce thing. But for the most part, you're not bouncing things. I will say the, um, oops, let me get here to the camo. The camo rating is okay. It's not like the best in class or anything like that, but it's it's good enough that if you build around it, and we I will show you how to do that, uh, it can, you can do bushwooky things. So that's pretty solid. Um, so there's like, I don't know why people are so down on this. Like the tank is really good, especially like, all right, so how I build the tank. Um, okay. Well first, okay. Let me get, we'll get into the builds in just a second. So like the 3d model, the armor, nothing, it's nothing. There's nothing. Um, you do have that, uh, that, uh, siege mode, right? If you were to click the, you click the thing and that this slows you down i'll get into this later but that also it lets you the suspension move up and down rock with the uh rock with the um the movement of the gun so you get more elevation and more depression you get like 15 degrees of stupid gun depression which is excellent right but otherwise like it's not there's no armor there's none whatsoever so um like with that in mind all right so with uh Okay. With the build, I just want to get into the build right now and we'll get back into like, okay, so I'm always taking the module durability increase because again, I, I've talked about this before, but like the traverse bonuses that this gives you uh, or that this takes away from you is 4%. Very, very small. It's a very, very small amount. And you can see here, like the effective traverse goes less than less than one degree per second. You don't even notice that. And the other side of it is, if you take this one, you get that that very very small bonus. Um, it's like, well, actually, hang on a second. Some of this might be from food and from a, a decent like. Okay, so you get this one. You go from you go like to uh, from forty three to forty five. Okay, it's a small bonus. It's like two degrees per second. You probably wouldn't even notice that. And if you go down, you lose one like like I said, less than a degree. Somehow math works out this way. So by doing this one, you are making it so that if your engine gets damaged or your ammo rack gets damaged, you're not totally hosed. Otherwise, it's painful. So I'm always picking this one, and I'm, I'm sick of debating it, to be honest. It's just the easy, obvious choice. I'm always picking the improved sight. Uh, for this one, I'm probably always picking the uh, the increased concealment, honestly, especially with this tank. I say always. 
most of the time I'm picking this one because concealment is so important. Scouting slot for the secondary loadout. And then this is really, really overpowered. So this is a sniper medium tank. And so because of that, the last field mod that you get is basically, if you look at what this does, it's, it's minus 5% of the aiming circle, which is basically an improved aiming unit, right? The equipment, this is an equipment slot, right? So you take that and you get down to 0.37. Then you got Brothers in Arms and you got a decent crew. And by the way, this tank gets a free large repair kit every game. Uh, the way I like to build it is to have, if you've got a pink improved aiming, uh, then you get down to 0.32, uh, which is amazing. And I personally run mine with a vertical stabilizer and then a rammer. And this, this is excellent because you don't need, like this is all the game, this is the entire, like the gun is fantastic, the DPM is great. There is, I think this is amazing. This is like better than your typical Leopard leopard PTA, I think. Um, and so people get all bent out of shape about the sniper mode and how that's not that great and da 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 da, and maybe it isn't. I'm not saying it is, but you don't even need it. This is a great tank right here. Like when this thing came out, they didn't have a pink improved aiming and they didn't have the field mods. This field mod is broken. This needs to be tuned down. This is insane. Uh, so this is why like 0.32 solves the biggest problem that this tank had, which is the, the not very good final accuracy. So now you already have God tier final accuracy. And then let's just say you tap this button. Now what you get is basically your reload goes down. Your dispersion gets incredible, right? 0.32 is like hair, picking hair off of a dog. Um, your, your moving dispersion is not very good. So this basically in your, your speed goes down, like a lot of stuff happens here. They don't want you to move very fast. This is for like sitting at the back and sniping, except your reload goes down too. So there are kind of games you can play where because it takes two seconds to flip back and forth and the reload is like 10 seconds, you can like, you can like shoot in this, flip back to the regular mode so that you reload faster and then flip back to it and stuff. There's all these like monkeying around you can do. And I honestly, I hardly ever use this. I think people are overusing this, this mode, right? And that's why they're like, boy, I feel so gimped all the time. How about... Just don't do that. Keep your 0 0.32 excellent accuracy and your DPM. Like, I think the times that I've switched to the sniper mode, which by the way, like point going from 0.32 to 0.23 is incredible. The times when you need to do this, you'll know, right? If you like, you come up to a certain area, you're shooting at 500, you're getting a couple of 500 meter shots and then you're flipping out of it. But if you're staying in this the entire game, you're doing it wrong, right? So this is, I think the problem with this tank that people don't like is that first of all it doesn't have any armor and second of all they keep trying to use this sniper mode too much this is where you should be living 90 percent of your time and so this is how i this is how i run the tank and it's fantastic excuse me the other game or the other mode that i have the alternate loadout is uh is a sniping uh, is, sorry is a scouting loadout and it's again I, I lean into it super hard it's it's just always just like a combination of this is going to depend on how good your crew is but it's a combination of, of optics, uh, CVS, and low noise exhaust. And how good your crew is will depend on what things you have in which places, right? This is nothing new. We've, you've seen me talk about this before. If you don't have very good camo, you can get, you can put it like this, right? And so that means you have 38 base camo on the move, 47 in a bush while you're sitting still. This is enough. This is enough to get some work done where you can sit there and and spot God, right? Because you've got almost 500 meters of view range and a CBS. You've already got a great crew and you da 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 da, da and you're, maybe you don't have the vision skills. You could always flip to the, have the, uh, the vision in the, the optics in the improved slot. That's another solid choice. Um, but however you flip flop these around, there's not a bad choice. But again, this is a secondary loadout. This is where I would like, if you're on Prokhorovka and you don't have a light tank, this is when you use that. If you're the same thing with Studiansky, or if you have a, you know that you're running XVM and you know that your light tank is awful, then maybe you want to just assume they're going to die and then you take this loadout. And yeah, you're not going to do quite as well damage wise, but like this is the, this, this is going to provide your team the spotting and stuff that you might be missing if your scout dies. And I'm pretty sure this is how I spend most of the game uh, that we're about to see. So anyways, those are the builds. That's the tank and we'll get into the, uh, the gameplay now. All right, so we're going to be starting out watching me playing in the uh, in the Kunzi Panzer. I've got uh, and it's an all. See, it's a, there's a tier tens in the in the match. There's tier eights in the match. There's one one uh, artillery each side, one scout each side, and so I am. It's kind of like this. I was like, I'm, I don't trust our light tank to do the right things, and so I decided to pick. You saw me flip to it at the beginning of the at the beginning of the commentary there. I picked my scouting loadout 
which has the uh, the low noise exhaust and the optics and the CVS, and I'm just going to pretend to be a scout this entire game. Um, and again, you'll notice the gun is kind of derpy when I have it lo skid out like this, but that's because I don't have any of the I don't have lo the improved aiming, I don't have the vertical stabilizer, I don't even have a rammer, right? But I am a scout, so I am I see the R scout go and do the wrong thing, so I'm going to get to this bush and I'm going to just uh, I'm going to go and do the things. So I'm going to sit right here and get comfortable. And you can see I can spot most of the uh, most of the map, right? So we're just gonna sit right here and wait for our team to do something. Hopefully they do something, uh, but be very patient because I don't I like the first part of this game is gonna be a little bit on the slower side because you just you really have to be patient. Nothing, almost nothing is spotted, so we don't know where things are. We don't know what we can shoot at. We certainly don't want to get spotted after shooting, so we're just gonna hang tight and see what we see. If we're trying to farm some assistance damage. Like, um, you know, just like a scout. We're, we are a scout right now. And, yeah, so we're just going to sit in the bush. You can see as I move the turret around how tight the gun stays because the turret traverse soft stats are very good, right? So when you move the hull, then it does bloom out a little bit, especially when you don't have vertical stabilizers like I, I don't. Um, but when you move the turret, it actually stays pretty tight. Yeah, right now there's not a whole lot to talk about, I know, um, but if you haven't ever played uh, in these bushes on Sand River, these bushes are very, very good. And uh, you can see right there, I'm able to spot that uh, that, that Indian Panzer and he gets nuked. And uh, I don't want to shoot this T-49 because I know he'll spot me and I don't want to shoot while he's over there because, again, he'll, he'll, sh he'll spot me. So I just want to stay put and see if I can't farm a bunch of assistance damage. There's a bunch of guns lined up and I don't know where their enemy tanks are, so I don't really want to run in with my face. I just want to play it slow because there's a lot of tanks out there. There's a lot of hit points to be farmed. So we're just going to play it play it cool. I'm not switching into the uh, sniper mode because, and I will say, the difference, I didn't realize this, I actually make a big mistake in this replay because I couldn't tell the difference between sniper mode and regular mode. And that was, I should have, I just whiffed the shot. I don't know why. Um, you're in travel mode when the little, the little reticle next to the aiming reticle uh, looks like a, uh, a couple of arrows, right? If it looks like a crosshair, you're in sniper mode. And if I had known that, maybe I would have done a little bit better in this game. But I uh, I know that now. So this T-49 is going to try it. He's got the derp gun. He's trying. I don't know how I just bounced that, but that E-75 bounced off of the armor that I apparently have. Um, you can see he look, it looks like it almost hit the cupola or something. I'm not entirely sure. Don't ask me to bounce, you know, do that again. That was That seems pretty lucky. Um, but here we go. Because I am so far off, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can use that sniper mode to take some shots, the 500 meter shots at those tank destroyers. We'll just see what we can see. Uh, oh, and there he is. There he is. There it is. Oh my gosh, we just miss it. But again, we're just going to play around the middle and try to be the supporting tank. Try not to get shot. Try not to just like get spotted if we can help it. I know the T-49 is over there somewhere. Just trying to get into a place and our team platoon buddy Schwacked dies. Schwacked was in a little deep, right? So this tank doesn't really have any armor, and Schwacked probably should have played a little further back, but that's that's okay. It happens. He he was uh, depending on his teammates, right? That's that's cardinal sin number one. But now we found this another another cozy bush because again we're a light tank, and gonna try to make it a little bit. It's it's not the best position because I want to be able to shoot the uh, spot those guys as they leave, but I can't really get much closer without being spotted. So I'm just gonna stay put, and again we're just gonna be patient. And I see the CS is coming up here. Like, we're not, we're definitely down three tanks, right? It's 10 to 13. But again, the game, that's, that's pretty much just because our heavy tanks have run in there with their faces. Um, there's a lot of hit points on our team. This really is anyone's game still. So I want to try to keep my hit points in the game, try to keep my gun in the game, and just be patient because this is about the part in the game where the enemy team could start to think they've totally got it and they get overly aggressive. They run in there with their faces. And if you can catch the push, you can pull the game back. So I'm just trying to stay alive and stay patient. Provide some vision. See if I can't, you know, catch somebody poking out of a corner and tag them. Let's see our T-49. The enemy T-49 is on the south side of the map. 
but I feel a little bit better about doing, you know, if I take aggressive, uh, aggressive shots. Uh, I'm not sure. I must have just, just barely tagged. I'm assuming I was going to get spotted here, but I wasn't. And I was assuming I was going to, that I was trying to shoot the, the side of that E-75's turret. I don't know what happened, but, um, you can see the, because I don't have the improved aiming, uh, to get the reticle that small, I have to fl flip to the sniper mode to get the accuracy to be able to actually put it in that guy's side, uh, consistently. And, um, now, I... <laughs> <laughs> a little bit frustrating there, but that bar, the boar sig was using the bushes uh, and that rock pretty well. But now the C-75 is caught out. There's nowhere he can be. So see how small the aiming reticle gets, even without... This is all with sniper equipment. I can sit here and... Or this is all with spotting equipment. I can sit here and just... Just wait and get my shots in. And, God, that T-49 is just super, super lucky. But again, we're just trying to be patient. I don't want to run out there with our faces because we don't have a lot of hit points. And I still have a heat round, but that's just going to be what this force gets. And I thought I would get spotted for that, but apparently I am not. Not spotted. I did accidentally spot that ISU-152 coming through the uh, through the middle. And he's dead. And you can see how long the reload is. That Boar Sig was still there. When I'm, sitting, when I'm sitting in sniper mode, there's definitely... It's slow. There's no question about it. It is a slow reload when you are in the sniper mode. But, um... You know, oh, and there's, I was trying to get the C-75 spotted. I'm not sure exactly why I couldn't spot him before. There was a, hill, uh, you know, some kind of a building in the way or something, but... Anyways, there's a little bit of a... There is a gap in the buildings that uh, that I want to shoot that E-75 in. And, oh, just gonna, again, we're just gonna try to play, play it cool. Because we've got, we've got 1,700 spotting and about 1,800 damage dealt, which is... It's a little over 3,000 combined, but it's still not great. There is a lot of damage to be farmed yet in this game. So I just want to play it as as conservatively as I can. Try to save some hit points. This E75 is just making it easy. So I'll take what I'm given, right? And um, and this the V4 is pushing in. If I can just take out the C75, then everything gets a little bit easier. Because they have a bunch of tanks right here, and they're all trying to push around in our... There's just there's a lot of danger close. And we're just outside of proxy distance. So I want to take out the E-75. And then all of a sudden... Oh, 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 there it is. E-75 is gone. Now, this is the part where I make a mistake. Because I'm waiting for one of these guys to shoot. And I forgot that I wasn't in travel mode. I thought that I was in travel mode. And I'm actually in sniper mode. And so because of that, I'm, like, struggling. I, like, whiff the shot here. Oh, my God. And I, I'm not reloading fast enough. And this is just... I I'm totally, totally have botched this engagement. I wanted to kill that guy before he could be doing exactly what he's doing right now. And I am totally throwing it. I, my, my turret gets messed up. Luckily, the WZ, the light tank, ends up coming over the hill. And I figure out, I pull my head out of my butt and take the uh, take the tank out of sniper mode and into travel mode. That was a big brain play. Super dumb. Uh, because I didn't realize when I entered that engagement, I thought I was still in travel mode. But now you can see with the little two arrows, now I'm in travel mode. And before I was in sniper mode. Wow, it uh, it hurts. It hurts my soul. Um, but anyways, everybody makes mistakes, um, and now you know. Hopefully, you can all learn from my mistake. And again, we're just going to go back to these bushes in the middle because I can provide a lot of spotting in a lot of parts of the map from this way. And God, this T forty nine is he's doing it. It's kind of annoying, but I would really like to take the other scout out of the game if I can help it. And he's just playing just below the ridge, doing a pretty good job, to be honest. Um, but again, now now these guys are over here, and again, I, that's a really long shot, so I'm switching into sniper mode so that I can at least try to hit the weak spots. Um, but again, that's like a 500-yard shot, or 500-meter shot. These are long rounds, so this is why you use the sniper mode. So I can, I can pretty reliably put it inside of that E4, because again, if I had the damage-dealing um, equipment loadout, then perhaps I could... Perhaps I could have hit that shot without getting into sniper mode, but again, the tank is really like, I guess is why I called the, the, the video what I did, it's like a Swiss Army knife. Because I, I can be a scout, I can be a DPM monster, I can also be a sniper snipe tank. Like, it really can do anything that you need it to do. And so I'm a huge fan. I'm still, a, oh god, okay, alright, so the, the T-49 is lit on the left. I don't know what I was thinking. This guy, he, he rushed the shot, and I I don't know why. I, I rushed the shot, too. I've, I was target fixated in the Striv, didn't even see, didn't even see that this guy was so close to me. And now this this uh, Caliban must be on reload, or he would be 
he would be shooting at me right now, but he's aiming, aiming, aiming. And I mean, I know those things take forever and a day to aim in, so he rushes his shot. And if he had a shot before, he certainly doesn't have it now. Uh, a shot ready for him, that is. So I know I can be a little more conservative with my shots. I didn't really deserve to hit that one, but it's okay. Um, RNG giveth and RNG taketh away. And again, this, the, the T-49 chucks one in the, in the air and he doesn't land it because that's, that's a long shot and he's got the derp gun. Um, that's not really what derp guns do, uh, especially the one on the T-49. But, uh, we're able to hear, like, we're trying to clean this up. So we're actually bringing it back. Once we kill this, this 4005, or the, the M4, the AMX M4, it's really unfortunate that that WZ died. Like, I should be backing up right now. I should have been backing up. I didn't, I've just, again, this T-49 keeps consistently surprising me. And he aimed a shot and he hit the derp shell into my track. He's got to be mad. Uh, that took the track off and did not damage. Um which has got to be frustrating for him. But I'm going to take a lot more a lot more safe route now. And it's now it's three to four. If our light tank hadn't killed himself, um, it would be four to four, and I would be in a much better spot right now. I think our team would be in a much better spot. But I'm going to keep... I'm going to try to keep eyes on this T-49 because I have, I have a lot of hit points, but I'm still a one-shot for that T-49. Because he has the derp gun, all he has to do is pen me once, and I'm done so. Uh, the... M103 has not been spotted this entire game, so that's a big question mark. And I'm assuming that T49 is going to try to stay up in the north. The Striv, like, everybody has kind of been spotted before, except for the artillery and the A and the M103. Uh, the artillery, I saw the shell go, and I saw the shell, um, the shell tracer leave from around, about behind the Striv. So I am trusting that I'm going to be able to get up the K line without being spotted, or at least not being spotted too far off. I'm trying to get some of our tank destroyers to wake up. This E3 is... He's in an E3 and he's still at F1. I wish that position would go away because, honestly, everybody just likes to go there and sit forever, and this is what's happening. Like, I think he's now leaving, but it's just so frustrating because that position is not, like... It's useful sometimes, but that doesn't mean you should stay there the entire game. So I'm trying to cross over, knock my tracks off like a really good player, and, uh, and now I'm trying to just... I just want to get some vision. I want to see where things are. And uh, hopefully I can find some, uh, an artillery in the back here somewhere, somewhere. And I think there's probably a Striv, but we're just going to have to be very cagey and see. I want to just be able to use my, oh, there's, okay. So I was trying to use my gun depression if he wasn't paying attention, and he totally was. So he's looking exactly this way. And, uh, and oh, there's, okay. That's an artillery. I, <laughs> and uh, I was able to dodge somehow. Now, oh my god. We're gonna get him on the way down. Good, good, good. And now, the strip is still there, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe he maybe he bucked off the side or whatever, but, like, I really have to do this. We have a minute and, and a half left. Our, 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 like, tank destroyers are still, like, I don't know where this E3 is, like, taking the scenic route. And, uh, and so I see the M103. He's a dead stick. That guy's not paying attention. So I'm trying to see if I can take out the Striv. Because uh, he's he's trying to run. He's trying to put the M103 between myself and him. Kudos to that Striv for doing the right thing, doing the right play. And again, I, I don't know where the M, where the uh, T49 is. I don't want to get shot by the T49 because he could very well be in the back aiming a shot at me right now. So I realize the M103 is dead. Let's see if I can put another shot into that Striv. I don't know if that one hit or not. Probably not unless I mega low rolled. But now that I know that this M103 is dead, I'm just going to, like, I don't think I can physically finish the game. Uh, but I have six kills and 5,000 damage, 5,500 damage, plus that blind shot on this on the Borsig. I'm just gonna just put the rounds in. I get free damage here, and so why not? Um, like this right now, the M103 is acting as a spotter for the rest of his team. So this guy needs to die. We go ahead and get a fire. That's nice. And now I'm not spotted, so we can. I'm gonna take a little bit of a different route. I don't want to go up past where he was. They're probably expecting that. I'm gonna take this little gully and uh, try to just do something they don't expect. Use the mobility, and again, I, we have 24 seconds. Like, it's not physically possible unless both things die. <sighs> or somebody goes and suicides or whatever, but like, I don't know. You just do it the best you can. And uh, let's see if I can't get an extra shot in the game. And we know somebody's on the cap. I'm sure that's the T-49. The Striv would not have had time to get over there. So that's got to be the T-49, which means we don't have time to go find him. That must mean I must have missed the shot. On the there we go. Just before the game ends, I land the shot in. And, uh, for the kill on the Striv. Fortunately, that is a draw. Alright, so at the end of the game, we ended up taking home 7,000 damage, 3,300 in, uh, spotting. 
uh, the Top Gun, the High Caliber, the the Radley Walters, and obviously an Ace Tanker. Um, that ended up giving us, let me see here, 1,200 uh, base XP, which is it's just decent. You know, that's not like, there's obviously uh, featured better base XP games on this channel even, but pretty remarkable nonetheless. Not eight kills doesn't happen very often. Um, and it really just shows what the Kunzi Panzer can do, you know. I didn't end up taking home uh, 7,100, uh, 71,000 credits, but I had a, you know, I had a booster going and some courageous resistance and so on. So I still probably would have um, made some money, but, you know, tier nines are not premium tanks. They don't have a premium tank booster associated, credit booster associated with them. So, like, they don't make really good money. Um, so anyways, I'm pretty happy to turn 71,000 credits in a tier nine anyways. Um, but yeah, I just, I know people, uh, there's a lot of people in the game right now that are not a big fan of this tank, and I think they're just, it's just underrated. People are trying to use the sniper mode too much, and that's causing them to think the tank is bad. But if you just think of the sniper mode as some extra thing that you don't use all the time, and you kit it properly, the tank is actually excellent, and then the, 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 the sniper mode is just like the cherry on top. So, I really like the Kunzi Panzer, I think that the field mods and the proper equipment make a huge difference. So if you've played it and you didn't like it, try field mods first and then see how you feel because some of those some of those field mods make a huge difference. So anyways, hopefully that uh, helps you guys decide whether you want to buy this tank with the with your battle pass tokens. Um, yeah, or let me know. Well, let me know in the comments below, you guys, if you plan on buying this with field with your with your battle pass tokens or something else or, or what your favorite battle pass token tank has been. Let me know. Let me know in the comments curious about what people think about this. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right.